Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Aishwarya Prajna, but you can call me Aish. I'm going to talk about sustainability today. And it's one of these problems which are social wicked problems, which are known as social wicked problems, because we don't know the exact solution of it yet. And either we know really complex solutions, which are at great, great cost to ourselves, or, our, or we don't know the solutions of and I want artificial agents to be able to understand if they are making sustainable choices. So whenever we talk about sustainability, we generally have to bear some cost for achieving sustainability. So we need to achieve that with the help of bearing some cost. So either it's like collective long-term goals and sustainability is such a problem for which we need to have a solution which we need to take collectively. And it's mostly like long-term goal. It doesn't happen in one day. We need to make decisions which would impact in the long term. And Eleanor Ostrom's studies have worked on collective action problems quite a lot. And these collective action problems are often modeled as, for example, prisoner's dilemma problem or games of trust or public goods game. These are some examples how collective action problems are always uh, thought of. So what happens in this case is if we think of our own personal good, in that case, we are trying to maximize our personal rewards. And that would mean that we are not thinking about the society as a whole and it might lead to situations like tragedy of commons when if there's a if there's a limited resource that limited resource gets depleted and none of us can get enough resource and we ultimately die and i'm trying to model that situation for a very uh, simple you know principle simplified way of uh, test bed and define that in terms of artificial aid. So how do we, how do we analyze the, this kind of long-term impact of agent action? And what should be the agent architecture? What agent architectures are actually helpful in achieving these long-term goals like sustainability? So forging tasks are often considered in multi-agent systems as a canonical problem for which uh, cooperation is uh, quite steady because it's uh, something like uh, forging tasks are those ta do tasks where uh, agents are asked to collect resources from the environment and it often needs some terrain investigation, exploration, and then collecting these resources from the source and taking it to some destination and often needs a bit of collective effort in doing that. So coordination and cooperation are often needed in that. And uh, these are often thought as social gains as well. Um, however, sustainability has been largely unexplored in this context. So I'm interested in that. So I, I would start with defining a test bed, the sustainable foraging problem. And then I would analyze how the agent's actions are impacted over the longer term. And for that, uh, we need to investigate different agent architectures with varied resource constraints. Now let me try to define what the sustainable foraging problem is. So for example, there are different environment types. One could be a forest where there's a lot of resource and very high replenishment rate, even if you try to collect that resource, you can take any action you want, but it won't impact the abundance of the resource much. That would be pasture, where there's limited resource and the replenishment rates are moderate. Or it could be desert, where the resource is scarce and replenishment rate is quite low. So the agent's goal is to forage and maximize the cumulative reward. 
and the ninth solution would be maximize at each step so you collect as much resource possible at each step and depending upon which environment type you are in you are in a dilemma if it's pasture your resource is limited and you fall into a dilemma so my question is do these agents that i'm trying to talk about do they know which environment type they are in do they understand what kind of actions they should be taking so um the way i'm defining it uh, it's it's simulated and it has some uh, constraints that the agents need to follow and these agents can carry a particular amount of energy at any time step which is which i've defined as a and the amount it collects at each time step is dependent upon how much energy is remaining in the environment so if there's enough resource they can collect a amount if it's not the amount of resource left and the agents who are collecting resources that's that's what is it so the parameters gt and m dash t i would explain it in a bit and the resource depletion is basically the replenished amount and the amount that has been forged and that's that's it and the reward or the payoff that each agent is receiving that is defined as a logarithmic function of the current energy level of this agent so let me talk about the basic structure of this uh, foraging problem so these agents are foraging to gain energy and to live and these energies are needing this energy to survive each time step and the amount of the resource that the agent collects at each time step is either constant which is a which is the maximum amount it can carry if it can or the maximum amount available whichever is less of course so it's a minimization function and these agents are exhausting their energy level at each time step for survival and you assume that all these agents start with some personal resource or uh, some energy so which is not constant for everyone there's a, a interval in which we are considering this and these resources in the environment are replenishing at some rate depending upon which environment type they are in so now let me talk about the agents ha huh? these uh, agents have two actions that they can take the agents can either be greedy somewhat like us what we are doing in sustainability issues and we are moving towards climate change we collect resources irrespective of our needs and we keep on doing that or agents could be moderate where the agent only collects resources when it's needed and that's what what the need the need is being defined by the threshold of its own personal reserve of energy so that's a question what should be that reserve what should be that threshold that's another question however um let me define the environment types a bit more and and define how it's calibrated so the forest environment type is such that it can support any action of the environment and there is abundance of resource so it can support both greedy and moderate agents so if it's greedy the resource in the environment which is in that y axis that remains constant that's the calibration however anything if it's an upward gradient as well then also that would be a forest environment type i just define the baseline in this case and moderate agent only collects the resource when its personal reserve goes down below a certain threshold so it doesn't forage until some point of time and then starts foraging and then we the they have selected the amount it forages it can sustain for one two time steps and then again it's foraging so it's like an alternating thing that's happening here and we can consider all different kinds of growth of uh, resources it could be um, logistic growth like the way it happens or other other ways in this case it's constant replenishment rate or the pasture environment can support the moderate agents and you can see that if the agent is greedy the resource gradient is downwards and we can understand from our um 
I would, wouldn't say that we are doing like rational beings. But we can see that. So uh, we can think that this kind of greedy behavior would make a downward curve in the resource that we don't want. However, in the past, in case of moderate behavior, since we're not foraging at all time instances, the way the calibration is done, the resource is sustained. So we want agents to take moderate behavior. And if it's desert, it's like a no-win situation when it can support neither greedy nor moderate agents. So it's downward curve for both of the cases. And this is a single agent baseline result. Um, I'm going to show multi-agent results in a while. Okay, so if it's a multi-agent system, but the action that they are taking is deterministic, and which means that the agent is greedy for all time steps or moderate for all time steps. So if it's greedy, then we see that for forest, after some time step, after 500 time steps, these agents are all alive the way the calibration is done. But in pasture and desert, they all die because resource has depleted and they die. In case of moderate agents, we see that in pasture, they're able to survive with the same conditions. So the conditions, the amount of resource, the replenishment rate, everything is same, but the behavior just has just changed, which is moderate and they can survive a bit longer. And, but the mean reward is same because um, that's how the calibration is done. Because they can collect at most a amount of energy. And in desert, they were all moderate. They survived for a while. However, a lot of them died, which is tragedy of commons, which we don't want. We don't want these agents to die off. So the inferences from these lines are in forest, neither moderate nor greedy behavior impacts the sustainability of the environment. So these agents can maximize their rewards and they have the way to maximize and become greedy. But in pasture, moderate behavior is helpful and the cumulative reward of the moderate agents is higher since they can survive longer. However, in desert, moderate agents can survive a little longer if they're moderate that we saw, but greedy agents survive because they're depleting the energy very quickly. So the forest is basically a no social dilemma situation where there's no dilemma involved and desert is like a no one situation. So they are kind of similar in one way. However, the pasture situation is like a social dilemma and there's a trade-off between individual rewards and cumulative long term. So now let me uh, explain how the deliberation works. Uh, the previous one, it was just a dis dis deterministic one. So there was no deliberative there. there. Now, if, if there's a simple uh, learning involved, which is a, with, with the help of neuroevolution, we have some parameters that the agent is taking, which is like the number of greedy agents that are present in the environment or the number of resource collecting agents. So, here, resource collecting agents would mean that if a moderate agent has the threshold below a particular threshold, then they are collecting resources. So at that time, there's no difference between moderate and green. And the number of alive agents and what is the current resource level in the environment. And the agent action can either be greedy or not. So now some results. So if it's a multiple agent scenario, and if, if it's forest and desert, just as we saw that forest and desert are similar in some ways, there's no like either a no win situation or there's no dilemma. So we see that um, in forest and environment type, agents learn to become greedy because they're trying to maximize their individual profits. So within a few iterations, they're understanding that they need to collect as much resource as possible and they are collecting that. And uh, in case of, case of desert, the number of agents that are greedy, that's like moving a bit, and then it's, so they don't have to learn anything basic. So they are trying to achieve better payoffs, but they can't. You can see that resource level is zero after um, 
several kinds of factors. And then these are different episodes in which it's an episodic, episodic way the learning is happening. Now, uh, let me show the results for the pasture learning type. Where, um, first, let me consider how it happens in a single agent scenario. In a single agent scenario, we see that after few time steps, the agent learns to become moderate because the greedy agent, the average number of greedy agents goes down to zero and the resource level stays where it was. So they are alive when they learn that. So learning helps these agents to become moderate. However, in a multiple agent scenario, this gives rise to an end player game. And that means that each agent is trying to think about their own individual rewards. And there's a lot of resource for everybody. So they're thinking that I have enough resource for my pool, why don't I get that? And each of them are thinking of their own resource, individual reward, and collecting these resources. So cumulatively, as a collective action problem, the resource is depleting, which none of the agents can realize, and ultimately, they die. Tragedy of course. This is single agent scenario is sustainable, and multi agent system is not sustainable. That's where the dilemma lies. So we show that near revolution based deliberation is failing to take necessary action for sustainability. Agents die. So what should we do beyond the deliberative layer? Proposing to build reflective agents who can reason and who can think what their actions were. And depending upon that reasoning, they make the choices. And reflection has been around for a while now. It was first um, like talked about by Patty Mays and it's basically a reasoning performed by a system about itself. And we want these agents to reason about their actions and then act accordingly. So reflection is basically a, self, a form of self-awareness where this, ob this object, the agent is becoming an object of its own attention. And the learning and reasoning happens within, from within the system. So... Now my question is, do the agents know which environment type they are in, if they're reflective and do they know what the impact of their actions would be? So the tower of self-aware agents is generally in this way where there's no, when there's no attention to environment or self, it's basically no self-awareness. If the agent understands that there is resource available, then we say that the agent is minimally self-aware. Otherwise, if the agent is capable to understand um, and maximize immediate rewards, we say that it's um, little self-aware. And maximum self-awareness, the highest order of self-awareness is when the agent is able to understand the long-term impacts of their actions. So the agent architecture that we are proposing is having a higher order, a meta layer of reasoning embedded in the system. And this reflective layer involves having models of self and the environment along with the deliberative layer. And this reflective layer is basically intervening on the actions that's been provided by the deliberative layer, layer which is the neural network. Um, for example, uh, in paper, we have shown a very simple example how we can implement this kind of reflective layer. It's basically trying to see what the resource level is in, in the environment. It's trying to see what is the energy level of the agent. And if the energy level of the agent is below threshold, which is in case of moderate agents, then that means that the resource depletion is a result of their actions. So it's not taking the action that has that it has taken in the previous time step. So it's basically intervening with action. This is a very simple way we, how we could implement this reflective layer. And there could be several other ways of defining that. And 
we see that when we implement that reflective layer and we again run it for several episodes, we see that since uh, the agents are not staying greedy entire time, they're forced to become moderate every alternate time step, the resource is sustained. And this reflective governor is intervening with the actions and making these agents alive. And of course, the resource level is sustained now. And this flip-flop, flip-flop behavior that's happening, it's because the intervention of the deliberative layer, the way we have chosen, we can choose it in different ways so that we don't have this kind of flip-flopping nature. And the resource is sustained. So get on time. The takeaways uh, that we have from this simple experiment that forest environment type and desert environment type is easier to, for these agents to work out. In forest environment type, there's a lot of resource. There's no resource constraint. So these agents can become greedy if they want to. There's no harm. But in pasture environment type, when there's a single agent with just the deliberative layer, in that case, the agent becomes um, not able, uh, the agent becomes to able to learn if it's a single agent system, but in a multi-agent system, they cannot sustain and the resource depletes. And we illustrate with some simple examples of how reflective agents where they can reason about their actions and about the impacts of their actions on the environment, how they can be self-aware and how they can actually make some sustainable choices. And for these wicked problems, like sustainability, learning alone may not be enough. Thank you for listening after, and thank you for coming today morning after last night's party. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Vaishwa.